Okay, so give me a minute and we'll talk about the situation around Avdivka and people's responses to it. Um, Raphael is unconvinced by the mountains of evidence provided by the Ukrainian MOD. And me, because clearly I'm a Western propagandist, right? I make no bones about it. I don't drink the Kool-Aid of Western propaganda. I mix it. God damn right I do. Now, so why believe me? You shouldn't, especially if you're pro-Russian, right? You should believe Russian sources. You should believe what the Russians are telling you, right? So let's take a look at Russian sources. This video is only going to draw on Russian sources for what the situation around Avdivka really is. And we'll start here with this telegram post, which you can see is, is in Russian. We'll move to the English here in a second. It's not a good morning. At night, the Ukrainians attacked our airfield where the Army aviation was based with ATACM's missiles. One of the most serious blows of all time in the Northern Military District, if not the most serious. Why? Because those KA-52s and the SU-35s are providing close air support for this offensive. Without them there, it's a problem. This is from the Telegram channel of a guy who's actually in the trenches around Avdivka. Well, that's it. We're stuck. We can't move on. They immediately cut us out. Um... Rain is no problem for cluster munitions, but we don't have cluster munitions. There are still problems with counter-battery warfare. The guys on the front are sitting in the cracks. You literally can't raise your head. It's very difficult here. If there is not the same powerful artillery barrage as on the first day, we will get stuck. I know everyone is waiting for victorious reports, but the picture is a little... Damn it, different. We do not export without heavy artillery, meaning they can't move forward. This is another guy in the trenches around Avdivka. Our warrior subscribers from the Donetsk direction spoke about the situation in Avdivka. There is no need to talk about successes on our part. The entire theater of military operations consists of four forest plantations, if they manage to knock out the enemy out of one line of defense, then they completely destroy all the trenches with artillery and tanks. That's what the Ukrainians are doing. As they fall back and the Russians take their positions in the tank, uh, in the uh, trenches, they pound them with artillery fire un until they, ex they don't exist anymore. They literally don't exist. In the north of Avdivka, they've done that with at least one trench network now which means that the Russians must cross two whole fields at a clip, open terrain, all the while exposed to ATGM fire. After such shelling, the position becomes impossible to hold. All that has been achieved at the moment is moving the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces away from ours and increasing the gray zone. The current results of the offensive, which has been going on for 10 days, are in no way worth the losses in incurred. No one cared about counter-battery combat or the ultimate superiority in, f in fired shells. Uh, to put it frankly, the sector of the forest fortified by the enemy uh, was chosen and uh, our, our success there could not have been expected. Could not have been expected. No, it couldn't have. And finally, there is this young woman who is a Russian volunteer in the Donetsk region who made a plea on social media for body bags because they're out of body bags in Donetsk. Uh, you shouldn't believe me about anything. You shouldn't believe the Ukrainian MOD about anything. But you should believe the evidence of your eyes, the cries for help, the pleas from the trenches, the desperate calls for aid from the people in need. 
These are real things. And it's costing lives, lots of lives, every day. The Ukrainians are doing a fabulous job against overwhelming odds. They deserve our support. And they deserve to be believed.